and we do so with the six replica aeroplanes brought to us today by the Great War display team who've lined up at the western end of the grass runway. advances in the aeronautical art. This is the 2022 display by the Great War display team. Two SE-5s first in and turning away as we look at them to orbit above the formation. Nearest us is the Junkers CL-1 with one Fokker triplane on its tail heading away from us in the other direction, one SE-5A with the other Fokker triplane on its tail and they're going to show us something of what the dogfights of the First World War were like. Now the thing to remember as these little aeroplanes go through their paces is that these were aircraft that were built from wood and fabric. They've been designed with rudimentary knowledge of aerodynamics and their engines were often unreliable. These replicas all have modern engines. service and that brought about a quite of course on 
we're seeing here is a representation of the, like the, the, the middle part of the First World War, when dot points such as this were quite commonplace, but the early aircraft used to take to the air without any armaments at all. They were used primarily for reconnaissance. And then the bombers literally started shooting at each other with hand guns. By a model which was far more successful in 1917, 21 British Empire squadrons and two American units of the US Army Air Service used them during the First World War, and many of the leading Allied aces flew SE-5As, great names such as Nick Manick, Albert Ball, James McCubbin, and Billy Fisher. By contrast to the 320 Fokker triplanes, in excess of 5,000 SE-5As were produced. It performed well at all altitudes, it was faster than its German rivals, it was strong. Here we've got six aircraft doing simulated battle. The realities of the First World War were such that dozens of aeroplanes would be engaged in this sort of close-in tail chasing. Today, with aircraft like the F-35, the Typhoon, we talk about beyond visual range fights. You can see the aircraft you're going up against. It was entirely the opposite during the First World War. Multiple aircraft would be circling, climbing, diving, to get what we today call a uh, firing. This is a very interesting aircraft. It, the original was a two-seat monoplane ground attack platform. It was first flown quite late in the war in December 1917. It was based on an earlier Yukon design, the J-8, but it had a longer fuselage to accommodate the rear gunner. Just 47 of these were built and delivered by the time of the November 1918 armistice. But it was the most effective of the late war German ground attack aircraft. It could have gone down much like greater influence on the course of the conflict had the army been fired by the Wright brothers. And you contrast the design and the capabilities of those early Wright flyers yeah. to what the later war designs. Yeah. But nonetheless, it was a very short period, and as so often, conflict drew on Aviation developments. Yeah, that's right. Craft are now falling up for their final flight pass, and with this, we pay tribute to the aviators of all countries. We bring the Great War Display Team routine to a close and they're all going to come back and land on the grass. These are airplanes with some tricky ground handling characteristics as much as anything else. In period.